get ready to have your mind absolutely blown. I thought I was seeing it all and mine was. <laughs> this is the first truly disruptive diving technology I've seen in the last couple of decades, even more so than the smart computer dive watches. This device will change everything you thought about scuba diving, the way it feels underwater, and how we train people. All right, before I jump in here, just listen to what the world's most renowned underwater stunt performer, Liz Parkinson, you know, the person that James Cameron calls to do Avatar movies. I just became a Novello instructor. It's revolutionizing the tank and the weight system that we use when we go scuba diving. So when divers come and say, oh, or non-divers say, oh, tanks are so heavy, well, that's been debunked now. And you can actually learn how to dive with scuba on that's kind of more like free diving. Yeah, and that's her in some of these videos. Some things I've always taken as diving gospel, you know, like wetsuit buoyancy and waiting, were just turned upside down. I'll be honest, I was skeptical, a lot of people are. And I am gonna ask you to keep an open mind here as well. We're gonna hear from the inventor himself. Have fun with this one. Aviad, thanks for coming on. You're welcome. And you are Pleasure. the the developer of of the Avello system. I am. And this was your idea. That was my idea. So it started with you it is. on a napkin in a coffee shop. Actually, through a dive. Really? In Maui. There's a site on Maui that entering it is very difficult or considered difficult. It's a long walk. I was walking into a dive, and I'm like, why are we carrying that much gear? And as I started the dive, it was like, because we're very buoyant, so I need to compensate with weight and all that. And then through the dive, I'm like, if I only had a tank that gets shorter, forget BC and all that, it just gets shorter throughout the, throughout the dive, then I won't need to carry that much weight. And I come from chemical engineering. This is called an accumulator, actually, but it comes from, there's other devices where you have a pressure vessel and an inner element that is dynamic. Uh, shocks on a bike or on a okay. whatever. Okay, yeah. So, so it's yeah. the same concept. And I'm like, wait, that exists. You can pump water into a pressure vessel and you can lock the buoyancy there and then you don't need to carry weight and your buoyancy is going to be better. So for 40 minutes underwater, I was like figuring out if that could actually work. Got out, got to the shower. And that's where you had the idea, on a dive. On a dive. That's a good spot for this to be born. So I've been talking to a lot of people. Every person is coming up to me. Have you done that? You gotta do something on that. You gotta do a video on that. And then, and then everyone's telling me, you gotta come down and try it. You go, well, you know, we'll come. I feel peer pressure to try this thing now. Oh yeah. Like yeah. I teach. Biggest struggle in diving is probably buoyancy, right? Yeah. Weight sucks, no one wants to do it, tanks are pain. Right. It's buoyancy, that's really, you can tell a new diver from an experienced diver from buoyancy. Right. This is going to take that problem away. Yes. Mostly. But it's the diver. So as an instructor, you know that they struggle with it because as much as you'll explain it, until they spend hours yes. actually separating what they can do with your lungs versus what they can do with the BC, this is not automatic. There's a misconception that this is doing the work for you. Okay. It doesn't. It just takes the balloon away. Think about it this way. You have a tidal volume, and your tidal volume, that's how much you breathe right now when you, when you speak to me. It's relatively small. You just breathe in and out just a little bit. That's where you want to be underwater, right? So every time you breathe in and out, you change force by this much. But then in scuba, I'm going to strap a balloon on you that every time you go up and down, changes buoyancy by that much. So the struggle is to teach them how to change that. What this does is it actually allows you to use your little force. When you go up and down, it doesn't change. So it's much easier for the person to teach themselves how to dive compared with what we're doing today. That's the magic. It's not a buoyancy compensation device that is automatic and all that. Yes, we have a lot of technology that comes out of it based on what I just told you that is now integrated to Shearwater and, and Scuba Pro. Because we have so much technology coming out of it, people believe that this is automatic. But from the first time that we got out of the water, we knew that this is gonna change anything because of that buoyancy. And it took a while to be able to, to explain why when you strap a balloon onto somebody, it just, it's just a bad tool to teach them how to dive. So it sounds to me like this makes it to feel more like how you think it should feel underwater. Yeah, that's exactly what it does. When you go and I tell you, hey, I'm going to take you diving, let's look at fish. You're like, yeah, let's look at fish. And then I go, yes, but. So there's pressure changes and, and that pressure, every time you're going to go up, you're going to feel like you're being pulled up. So you need to change your position and you need to change and you go like, what? And they struggle. But the fish, I wanted to see fish. Why right. are we talking about? So with this, you, you still teach them the same physics, but the effects are far less pronounced. This so is a lot more... Okay, Always, that makes you sense. You go back to tidal volume. If you can control your ups and downs easily with your breath, that's what you want scuba to be. Right. That's what it does. Okay, now what about a really thick wetsuit? No problem. 
they dive <laughs> seven mil, eight mil. So after this was invented and we started diving, we're all instructors, right? First mm -hmm. question is like, what do you do with a thick wetsuit? So we took five millimeter wetsuits and seven millimeter wetsuits and large people with seven millimeter wetsuits and you go down to a hundred feet and, and you literally, you go in the system, you establish neutral buoyancy on the surface and then you swim down and you get to a hundred feet and you're like, I'm going to sink now. And you're like, oh, I'm not, why not? So we started taking wetsuits in mesh bags, remove all the air, you put weights on them, you use them like a flotation bag. And, and I encourage everybody who listens to do that. Take a mesh bag, take your wetsuit, make sure that there's no air in it though. You gotta no, really no, shake no it pocket. out. Yeah, like, like yeah, yeah. but do it for real. And then scientifically take it down to say 15 feet, see how much weight you need to remove until it gets back to neutral. Take it to 100 feet. What you will find is that what we were teaching in the scuba industry is a myth. It's not compressing. And, and the, by the way, the, the wetsuit manufacturers knew it all along. They were actually surprised when we came to them with the data. They were like, so, yes, it doesn't compress to what you guys think. Wetsuit compression was something that was taught in the scuba industry for so right. long that we took it as gospel. It's not even close. What does happen is because of the BCD compression, that's where the big forces are, we assign it to be the wetsuit. It's not. If it was true, every free diver that does free diving in cold water would have died. Think about it that way. So you guys did the study and found out that even thick wetsuits compressing and all that weren't really doing as much as everyone thought. Between you and me, if I take a seven millimeter suit, extra large, take it to the surface and I take it down, how many pounds of buoyancy do you think that it's losing? Before this conversation. If I had a guess, I'd say eight pounds, maybe 10. Or maybe 10. Yeah. If I told you it's two, two and a half. Really? Let's be real. A dry wetsuit that's set on the shelf on the first few minutes is going to drink water in. So there's going to be a bigger change in its buoyancy. So there's a transition period, minute or two we, or three. You know, you taught, right? Yeah, yeah, you got to shake it out and, no, you know, no. when you wet get, it. You come out from the first dive, right? Between dive one and dive two, you kind of drop two pounds. Yeah. All water that goes into the wet. So that's from the water soaking in. Okay. Yep. Get out of here. Try it. No, I believe you. Yeah, I, if it. you made that thing, I believe your hundreds, other stuff. Hundreds of wetsuits, <laughs> hundreds of wetsuits. And the, now, obviously, wetsuits change and all that. You'll always compare it to your tidal volume. You'll see that the changes around us, other than the BCD, are far, far smaller. It's only the, BC, it's only the big bubble that, that really responds well up and down. And think about it this way. A big bubble in a BCD, it doesn't have any resistance, right? It's a bubble. So the, the water pressing on it really will compress it. However, a wetsuit has tons of tiny bubbles in it. Each one of those is a tiny spring. Their ability to compress is built into the formulation so that it won't compress, so it will keep you warm. That was a revelation. This wasn't something that I knew. I went into it like you. I'm yeah, like, I'm going to yeah. crash to the ground now. Now that you go back, think about free diving, right? Tons of divers are diving seven yeah. and five mil. Yeah. As they go down, if there was an eight pounds difference, that's a lot. Wow. Eight pounds is a ton of force. She says around two-ish, give or take. Maybe it will be on some, it will be three, maybe even four. Big and... Yeah, yeah. But, but even then, and again, it's not much though. It's surprisingly how little that is and how much you can do with your lungs compared with dealing with like large forces. The BCD is like a bubble. So right. physics says that the volume of a bubble grows by the radius to the power of three. So even a small change in radius on a bubble is R to the, to the third, to the power of three. So a half an inch change on a BC brings you like 10, 15 pounds. It's huge. But that's why, when you were telling me before, you know, biggest problem is buoyancy. Now I put you in the water first time and I'm like, just do it with your lungs. And you're like, uh. So it really, it sounds to me like it brings it down kind of to where it should be. Yes. Mentally. That's why you hear people that do it. And it sounds like a subtle change. It's a huge change in how you feel. Wow. Now, what we do with the computers and all that is actually show you that. Because after the, we collect all this data and we show you after the dive, we check exactly where you're perfectly neutral. And then we track your, your buoyancy the whole dive and we show you when the force on you is you know, negative or positive beyond what you can do with your lungs, air consumption goes up. Even instructors. Wow. Yeah, that's what the Avello mode does. So what's the biggest challenge you've had with this? Like getting it out there, developing? What's this conversation. What, well, explaining it. Explaining it. Explaining it. Yeah, because it's so not intuitive. Well, is that not diving all together the general public? True. That's True. why I have a children's book on it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Absolutely. Um, no, but that, that, that's explaining actually, it. Yeah. Explaining it. Explaining it, especially to the professional side, because it goes against what you know, right? You have to have a BC because your wetsuit's going to compress, and then you whatever. Yeah. Yeah. This suddenly opens up the door to like, look at it this way. 
forget the system. This is a tank that becomes shorter on you as you dive. Think about it this way. I can make this lighter and lighter and lighter. This is an arms race now to make the gear lighter and lighter because from now on, I can always put more water in. The regulators will need to handle a bit more pressure, which the paintball industry already figured out. Okay. But, but you know how for years Cuba was, it's got to be heavy because we're all men and strong and all that? That opens up the door to... The whole gear should be much, much lighter if we want to expand this industry. So this also will have a huge impact on conservation. Yes. Wildlife, people aren't crashing into the bottom, oh, kicking up the reef. Yes. They're not, you know, doing this number. Their safety. Um, they run. They don't run into boats. Oh right, that safety stop. That's where everyone yeah. shoots up. These guys actually did. Uh, they, they checked that the weight saving actually lifts the boats. It actually has an environmental CO2 footprint because it's all lighter. This is almost half of the and overall weight the diver wears. When you multiply it by the whole kits on the gear, 30 divers, and you yeah. don't need any lead weights, it's a big difference. Wow. Yeah, so this, this is Verticals. Like, the more we'll talk about it, the more you'll say that there's more things that comes out, which is why we're partnering with everybody. Right, right. I don't know, I, I, I got bruises from it, but uh, I'd like to push back on old habits and old, I, you know, I, you probably heard the one not long ago where you no longer need to back it off a quarter turn or whatever, and, and that got people upset. I know. It's, I know. <laughs> oh, dude, that's, but when we started this, because it's so different, you know how here, like you just said, the quarter turn, you put a weight different in, people are like, oh my God, you're going to... Yeah. This is such a big change that we might as well do a wholesale. So we actually turned the, the tank the other way around because people hit their head on the regulator. You're like, you know what? Right. They flip the tank. You know how many people, people, how many people ask me professionals, hey, would the regulator work backwards? <laughs> like, uh, you can't swim upside down. No. Because no. your bubbles will go down. <laughs> They'll silt up the bottom. <laughs> so that is another thing. You guys turn the regulator yeah. around so it's not clunking heads. You see how this is so much closer to you? Yeah. Right? So this is a lot more streamlined than standard scuba. You, you can talk to people here. Actually, somebody just uh, contacted me. They were caught against the current and the people on the BC were like all sweeping back and oh, they're yeah. swimming. So because you're so close, then the regulator actually sits closer to your head. Okay. So by flipping it, we're giving you a lot more so room for your head. So you're cutting out that gap. Yeah. So you're not whacking. When you try and do a swim through and look good on the camera, you don't... <laughs> and, and, and the regulator just sits here and you route the, the hoses around you just like you would with standard. But again, your head is going to come up to about here. And you don't have a BC inflator hose. Especially for professional that you jump in and there's no BC, yet you float. Yeah. And then you're neutral because you don't have a BC. So do you think this is going to change the dive industry? It already is. I can't talk more about this right now because okay. we are the certification agency. But when you see operation this size, adopting on, on mass, behind you stands the largest operation in Australia, they already know. I mean, we're building the infrastructure. So yes, it's already changing. And you're changing mindsets, just like you and I, just in this discussion. Absolutely. I, I, I love it. I love new ideas, trying new things, and people get upset when they've got it all figured out and now they're doing a new thing. Yet we still drive cars and not uh, <laughs> horses. So, you know, people got very upset. They say that, uh, you know, you either adapt or die. It goes all the way back to nature. <laughs> innovation, innovation at the end of the day when it works, takes you forward and takes everybody forward. I agree. Like at the end of the day, people will get upset, but for the most part, once this takes on and you reduce weight and you reduce risk and you bring a better experience and it's lighter, everybody here is going to be happy about this. I'm a convert. I really appreciate you taking time. When do you think this is going to be the standard out there on the dive boat? Realistically. Realistically, I would say, obviously, no crystal balls here. You know how digital cameras came to be? A, a, on the shelf, there was like a 10% of it, and then it was 30, and then it's 50. I think that in the next few years, you will see a lot more operations here. Anywhere between the next three to five years, there's going to be a mass adoption. And at some point, it will get after that, it will get to the point that, oh, you guys are still diving the risky stuff. Up to the point that it will get to the insurance company, and then, then they'll be like, look, we're... You're not driving without airbags anymore. <laughs> right. No, I, I love this. Aviad, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks oh. for explaining to me the Avello system. You're welcome. Uh, the developer, the brains behind the whole thing. Thanks again, man. It's oh. great. It's been good. Uh, yeah, that's good.